Ganondorf is a pretty simple character to play. He's a great character for newer players to learn fundamentals, and he's one of my all-time favorite Smash characters. But what are his strengths and weaknesses, and can they be tweaked? In this video, we'll be going over how Melee Ganondorf's neutral, punish, and offstage game works. Then, we will go over how Project M changed Ganondorf to make him more competitive. Hey, this is Junebug, and I'm gonna use my experience in high-level Melee and PM to make a compelling comparison. <laughs> Melee Ganondorf is like a poor man Sheik, as opposed to actual Sheik, or the Adrenaline Junkie. In essence, that means his base game plan revolves around spacing his solid aerials, strong grounded moves, and converting off of grabs. Unlike Sheik and Falcon, he's pretty slow, which means he won't be winning neutral as often. For one, his nair doesn't work in neutral. The hitboxes only last a couple of frames each, unlike Falcons, meaning it seems pretty easy to stuff with a move. This coupled with his low airspeed and movement means he's not great at rushdown. He needs to play neutral methodically. His forward air and back air are some of the strongest aerials in the game and have good range. This allows Ganon to be pretty good with dealing with CC and ASDI down as even CCing a strong Ganon aerial can leave you too far to punish. His up air is a great anti-air, and can cover platform movement. Dare serves as a great hard read tool. The move is massive, extremely active, and can be used similarly to Falcon's undershoot stomp. Ganon's wave dash is actually pretty solid, and can be used to get his grounded options placed in the right areas. His jab is a quick counter hit tool, and is useful to mix in on his aerial pressure strings. However, it's definitely important not to overuse. His forward tilt and down tilt end up being pretty good for spacing. Of his smashes, his down smash is useful in neutral as it can lead to a full combo. CC is relatively strong as Ganon as well. He's a big boy, so he gets to CC for a while. CC jab, tilts, and grab are great get off me tools. Another interesting aspect of Ganon is his juicy Waveland. Waveland serves as a burst movement option to try and compensate for his poor movement speed. It also leads to some really fun ledge mix-ups. Ganon gets so much invincibility off ledge that respecting him is a must when he's near it. A combination of nil on stage and Waveland allow Ganon to threaten a huge range with invincibility. The specials are weird. Down B and Neutral B have niche uses, so we're not really going to talk about them. They're funny, but not that good. Down B is a burst movement option that sees about as much use as Falcon Kick. Side B is pretty risky, but has high reward as a launcher. It is burst movement, can be safe on shield, and has utility worth playing around with. And then there's Up B. When Ganon has conditioned his opponents enough through aerials, jabs, and tilts, grab and up B become mix-up options. Grab is central to his game plan and sets up many of his kills. Up B is a command grab that can challenge opponents shielding on platform or idling by an airborne Ganon. While it won't lead to much, 17% is nothing to scoff at, and it makes your opponent scared to shield. Just don't use it at low percents. Playing against Ganon is intimidating, but straightforward. The character has very poor movement speed and aerial drift. Waiting for him to whiff or jab and then approaching is pretty strong, as his escape options are limited. While platform camping Ganon isn't as effective as grounded movement camping him, it can still be effective. Unlike Falcon, who jumps and falls quickly enough with up air, Ganon has a slow full hop and lack of drift, which leaves him vulnerable in the air and coming down. When zoning him on the ground, Ganon doesn't have very many quick options. His burst movement is Waveland, Side B, Dash Tech, or the Mega Bus, Down B. It's all pretty predictable and loses to rolling and shielding. Like Falcon, he doesn't have a great out of shield game, which leaves him pretty susceptible to overwhelming shield pressure. His bear comes out high and his fair is slow, so he can also play pretty reactively to his aerial threat zones. 
Wrapping up, Ganon is a straightforward character who uses big, meaty hitboxes to threaten his opponents. Unfortunately, while he does have some burst movement, his lack of overall movement speed and aerial drift seriously hurts him when dealing with faster members of the cat. Are you watching this video and thinking, Man, Junebug is so cool. Because we at Allison Melee are doing the exact same thing right now. But maybe you're watching this video and you're thinking, Man, Junebug is so talented and handsome. And again, same. But maybe you're thinking more like, Man, Junebug is so much better at Melee than me. How am I supposed to beat Ganon God 420 on net play? And that, dear viewer, is why the Allston Melee bat signal has been called upon our presence. Viewer, I'm going to be honest with you. We can't be there for you when you're getting hit by a Ganon forward air and dying off the side of Yoshi's story at 23%. But something we can do is give you all of the data that we at Allison Melee have gathered by getting hit by a Ganon forward air and dying off the side of Yoshi's story at 23% ourselves. Constantly running at the Ganondorf player with no regard is a great way to get immediately blown up every single time. At the end of the day, Big Man's full hop takes a whole... Hey, hey Junebug, how, how many frames does Ganon's full hop take? That many frames, and in late man's terms, big jump take long time. Use your brain by dash dancing and staying just outside of that forward air range and force the Ganon player to overcommit. Mid-level Ganon hits different, but you can hit them back even differenter if you play your own game. And one last thing, if you see an unranked Ganondorf player holding down, usually about a whole platform length away, there's a 110% chance they're about to downbeat. So hold that shield, and knock him out of the park. Punish gets fun. It's helpful to think of Punish in terms of the characters it works on, percent, weight, and fall speed, and then what type of move something is, either a launcher, extender, or a finisher. Ganon's punish is almost built into his neutral sometimes, as his approaching aerials will also set up for the kill. Regardless of percent, you can approach with fair and back air and transition into an edge guarding phase. He has so many different launchers of different risk reward values. Down tilt is a pretty good low risk launcher at the mid to high percents and can reliably set up into an aerial. Down smash might be the hardest launcher to land, but has a really high reward. Hit with the first hit only, it drags down to the corner of the stage. Hit with both hits, pop up for an easy combo right next to Ganon. Side B is the same, high risk, high reward. Dare is a launcher, and usually the best aerial for starting a combo. It sends straight up, has plenty of hits done and damage, and links to a follow up. The basic DI mixup for Ganon aerials is fair and back air for the kill, nair for combo extensions. Catching DI in as Ganon ends up being so juicy as Ganon aerials do so much damage. They, they just do so much damage. So DI mixups will often net you kills much easier. Nair, up air, and up smash are useful as damage dealers and also extenders. Up smash is also an ender. You have one use with juggles and kills off the top, one use that can do 40 damage, and one use that sends at an amazing angle for kills and edge guards. Juggle state isn't too bad for Ganon due to up air and command grab shenanigans. However, because of his poor movement speed, sometimes he cannot convert into edge guard state as some other characters would be able to. Ganon's throws, namely up throw and down throw, might be some of the best throws in melee as they set up for juicy follow-ups and kill confirms on most of the cast. Up throw sets up for a tech chase on the ground or plats or a strict follow-up. Down throw is crazy. Versus fast fallers, you can get a tech chase at low percents or jab for a stagger situation. Versus middleweights, you can get an aerial or even a chain grab at low percents. Versus floaties, down throw into normal is pretty consistent. At mid percents, you can set up more tech chases on fast fallers, or link to a tech trap with jab. Mid percents versus middleweights, we can see chain grabs linking into a normal. High percents, fast fallers start to get chain grabbed and you can do a fun DI mix up with up throw if they are DIing behind. Chain grabs are super strong as Ganon and I for one welcome Ganon chain grabbing characters to death. TLDR, Ganon's throw game is amazing. It's also very character and percent specific. So rather than boring you with some of the details, I've linked some resources in the description and tried to hit on some of the key points. In closing, Ganon has lots of decent launchers in the form of down air, down tilt, grab, side B, and down smash. Does tons of damage with extenders and can set up short combos into early edge guards. 
versus Ganon combos, Smash DI up and away will prevent a lot of his more devastating punishes. Many of his moves are slow, giving you more time to prep for his hits with DI. DIing away on a jab or stomp can prevent stagger strings and tech traps from being as threatening. Like Falcon, the inherent DI mixup in his basic combos is scary. But remember, teching away is strong versus Ganon, because unlike Falcon, it is very hard to cover multiple options on a missed tech chase. If you tech away, he has to read it. Unfortunately for Ganon, he's a big boy, which means he's combo fodder. He's literally a perfect character to try a combo video on. The middling fall speed, lack of good landing options, coupled with his large hurtbox means pain. Ganon's recovery is okay. It's another version of Falcon's already pretty weak recovery. While Falcon gets decent recovery mix-ups with his aerial drift, Ganon is lacking in that. On the other hand, his mix-ups after down B are slightly better than Falcon's. But edge guarding him is straightforward. Rins repeat, avoid the edge cancel and tech situation. Getting clipped by up B isn't as strong at low percents for Ganon, as you recover quicker than he does. In theory, his edge guarding is some of the scariest in the game. While he lacks the utility of somebody like Jigglypuff, his aerials have a built-in punish game, as stated before, and are very strong when doing a rinse repeat situation. And his up air hits below ledge and semi spikes, allowing for fun edge guards on most of the cast. And because every percent is kill percent for Ganon, he doesn't mind setting up for this state, at least versus middleweights and fast fallers. He's got massive coverage with his hitboxes through bear and up air. A single aerial in a rinse repeat edgeguard situation can end a stock. And his wavelands are great for providing burst movement for the ledge, setting up for a low percent edgeguard. In conclusion, Ganon has solid normals but struggles with the faster characters. His punish trees have many launchers, and while predictable, can deal a significant amount of damage and set up his above average edgeguard state. Lastly, his recovery is quite predictable and hinders him against most of the cats. So, how does Ganon function in the current meta? We asked Kage, the warrior, how he feels about Ganondorf. Oh, it's great. I love it. Take it up fishing. See, he loves him. We will discuss P plus Ganon in this video, but know that Ganon has changed a significant amount over the years, and patches may still come in the future. So, how did PM tweak him? Well, now he's a sword character. Yeah, they did it first in this game. Take that, old dude. First off, Ganon did receive buffs inherent to the engine of PM. This includes, and is not limited to, an extra frame in the air, allowing him to do some fun waveland shenanigans that he couldn't do in melee. Tourney winner is now invincible, allowing for different ledge shenanigans and invincible up airs from ledge. Ledge cancels on down B, and normalized frame data on rolls and spot dodges round out his kit. Then Ganon got some aesthetic reworks, adding a darkness effect to his moves for all the edge lords out there, as well as new tools that help bring his kit together. Out with the old, and in with the new. Up to it was changed into Axe Kick. Axe Kick is niche and can be used to tack on damage off his throws or a tech chase, or some disrespect. Warlock Punch from Melee was replaced by Float. Float looks badass. Look at him, just floating, menacingly. While it doesn't allow you to float cancel like Peach, Ganon's float allows him to stay outside his opponent's ranges and pick his spots much more. It can be B reverse for some fun shenanigans. This leads to a better opportunity to mix up his landings, as opposed to the easy whiff punish Ganon landings received in melee. Nah, oh my nah. god! He was in the bracket where Moon and Lucky go. Oh my god. What is going on? What was that forward smash? It also buffs his recovery distance and mix-ups. Tapping B will cause Ganon to flap his cape at you, reflecting projectiles. It's a fun little homage to Ocarina of Time, and it can be useful versus characters that used to projectile camp Ganon for free. It also has some niche uses as a jab reset and tech chases. But how is Ganon setting up tech chases, you may ask? Side B is now Flame Choke, a command grab that leads to a full combo. This is pretty useful as a mix-up on shielded opponents. It ends up being slightly more useful than his up B command grab, as you can convert off your grab as opposed to resetting to neutral, and sometimes even disadvantage. 
Also, if you convert into side B offstage, you will look like a baller who doesn't even care about his stuns. For more details on Ganon's overall changes, I recommend checking out the wiki. On overall balance and neutral, the PM and P plus dev team fixed some things that were worse than they needed to be. Nair now functions as a move and ends up being a decent spacing tool. Now it works the way it was supposed to in Melee. Down B is stronger, comes out quicker, and lasts longer. Another easy way to make an average character good is to buff their speed. PM has mostly buffed the heavy character's jump squats, which means Ganon can aerial and act out a shield one frame faster. His dash speed is buffed as well, making him overall slightly quicker off the draw. However, they didn't want to make him just sonic fast. PM's design philosophy was to remain true to the character and his roots. By identifying some of his weaknesses in melee neutral, namely having no good way to deal with characters having better movement than him, they were able to give Ganondorf a fighting chance in neutral. We already discussed neutral B and side B briefly. Another burst movement option is raw dash attack. This buff dash attack can lead to full conversions and eventually set up for an edge guard. Another option is Dacus, or dash attack cancelled up smash. It allows Ganon to do some crazy approaches into a lot of damage. And down B has way more utility in this game as a burst option. In conclusion, Project M buffed most heavy characters in the engine, gave Ganon strong burst movement options, and the ability to mix up landings and shields much easier. Ganon has his old combos for melee and a whole new bunch to choose from. The new neutral options lead to some juicy combos. Side B, dash attack, and grab all convert into massive damage. Dash attack combos into itself and other aerials. Up throw is a chain grab on fast fallers. Side B has some cool follow-up options between tech chases, jab, down tilts, and dash attack. Okay, I see you. Oh! I see you. I see oh! You. Let's go, Jason! Down throw and back throw lead to some cool little combo mix-ups with dash attacks and aerials. DI in on a Ganon down throw, he gets his standard throw combos from melee. DI out, get ready to start throwing in back throws, dash attacks, or if you're cool, you can down throw Dacus. Ganon's recovery becomes a lot stronger. Ganon's up B has a slightly better ledge grab box, as well as a hitbox on the end of it. Like Falcon in this game, Ganon can grab ledge with his side B, and sometimes convert to a stock trade. Also, because ledge options and getting to the edge is slightly easier in PM, he can convert edge guard situations much easier. Once again, the slow grounded mobility is Ganon's main weakness in this game, as faster characters can still walk all over him, but his neutral tools allow him to inflict much more mental damage when he happens to get close enough to his opponent. In a game where the best characters have extremely fast movement options, he can struggle sometimes. This is coupled with the fact that while he hits hard, he doesn't hit as hard as other characters. Was that a kill? There yeah. you go. Or recover as easily. How good is Ganon actually? How good should he be? Can you make a heavy character good relative to the cast without fundamentally breaking them? Who knows? Maybe it's something worth discussing in a future video. My opinion? I think Ganon is a really fun character in both games. Melee Ganon is a really interesting heavy character, and Project M Ganon feels like an homage to both the Zelda games and the original design of the character. He's such a fun character, regardless of the engine. A slow, methodical mastermind, with menacing burst movement options, massive hitboxes, and the capability to end the stock in a few satisfying oh hits. Are we Dacus? seeing a Ganon combo? Do those exist? Forward air! Done! Oh my god! All hail the king.